Good evening and welcome to Thursday Evening Prayer, day two of our Novena. And I'm so sorry, but Facebook, I can't go live on it. So I'm praying that those who watch us on Facebook will come over to the channel. If not, then hopefully we'll post the video onto YouTube and onto Facebook. So it's good to welcome our dear Linda, who's with us and who've not those who've not logged in. You're welcome to this time of prayer. So we get our candles and we light our candles for our special intentions of this beautiful novena in honour of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. So we light this light and we give thanks to our Father, Mother, God for all the many blessings we receive, often blessings in disguise and we give thanks for our Heavenly Mother Mary. Amen. And now we ring our bells for unity and peace. So let us just be still for a moment as we come into the presence of love and we give God thanks for all the many beautiful gifts that we have received from the Lord's hand. Be still now. And now we begin <clears throat> with our opening prayer from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona and we read together I am bending my knee in the eye of the God who created me, in the eye of the Son who died for me, in the eye of the Spirit who moves me in love and in desire for the many gifts you have bestowed upon me. Each day and each night, each sea and each land, each weather fair, each calm, each wild, thanks be to you, O God. Amen. Our next reading is a hymn from Sing Your Faith from the Unitarian Chapel Hymn Book. And it's hymn number 47, and it's God Around Us, God Within Us. <clears throat> God around us, God within us, God the heart of all, God, we praise you. God, we thank you. God, we hear your call. You want us to love each other. You want us to be caring neighbours, sisters, brothers, blessed with amity. You would have us be good stewards of this living earth, caring for its lands and oceans, or they bring to birth. <clears throat> You have sent us saints and prophets, gentle avatars. Still your spirit speaks in Jesus, singing among the stars. God above us, God between us, God who makes us one, calling us to be compassioned. May your will be done. And that's by Clifford Martin Reed, born in 1947. That is a lovely, lovely hymn. Our next reading is from Psalms Now by the Reverend Leslie Brandt. And it's hymn number 37. It's high time we stop complaining about the dissipation of our world or the corruption of our society. At the same time, we eye with envy those ungodly characters who appear to have more fun or to be more successful than we are. If we really trusted in God and were truly committed to his purposes, the world might be a great deal better of today. God is in our world. He is destined to be the source of our joy and well-being, 
He is the fulfillment of our heart's desires. If we dedicate our lives to him and his will, he will be able to work through us to permeate this world's darkness with divine light. Let's keep our cool and try to be patient. Stop worrying about the apparent hopelessness of it all. We only contribute to this despair by always being negative and defeatist. God has not taken a vacation. He is here. He has his own way of dealing with the instigators of corruption. It will take time, but the victory is ultimately God's. Those who live within God's will will surely discover that his purposes prevail, that true joy and peace and security come from him. Let us wait on God and seek daily to obey him. He is our salvation and our security. And nothing in this world can take that away from us. Let us calm our hostilities, overcome our anxieties, and walk in peace and love. Wow, that is a lovely song. God is in our world. And the words are so true, <clears throat> because if we're of a negative mindset and a defeatist, then not even a miracle from God will change our mindset. So it's important, as we who are light bringers of peace, try and put on the mindset of Christ, who's not a pessimist, although he'd every reason to be pessimistic, when he knew as God what was going to happen to him and how his own people would report him and crucify him. So we ask God this evening to help us face if we are of a negative disposition or if we're a worrier or if we're a gossiper where we go and spread gossip. And a lot of people thrive on gossip. I used to do but not malicious gossip. Okay, our next reading is from Meditations Now by the same author, Leslie Brandt, and we have a reading for today, the Feast of St. Andrew, patron of Scotland, the 30th of November. And it's a three-worded statement, we are blessed. And the author guides us to read from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 1 to 6, but he asks us to reflect on verse 6. In that day you shall know that it is I who speak, here am I. How blessed are those who are chosen to be the servants of God. What a message they have to proclaim God's concerning love for the human family. Not only do they speak of God's judgment, but imbued with his spirit and authorized and empowered by his saving grace. They are to make known his salvation, to spread glad tidings of his redeeming and reconciling love to all who will listen to his gracious word. As it says in poetic language in the verses following today's reading, they are beautiful. It is true that God will judge and condemn to eternal darkness all who persist in opposing him and his purposes. It is equally true that those who deserve nothing less, who have rebelled against their creator God, and broken his law and have worshipped and lived for the things of the world, that they can be redeemed from the pits of darkness and be reconciled and, sorry, and be reconciled God. We who are now God's children and servants 
were once the children of darkness and disobedience. God sought us, God found us, and took us back to himself. Now we are enjoined and assigned to live out and proclaim boldly the redeeming, reconciling love of our God to our fallen, lost, suffering brothers and sisters throughout this planet. It is a joyous task, a tremendous responsibility, an exciting adventure, a difficult and pain-filled struggle. We plunge ahead with confidence and with the assurance that our great God has circumscribed us with his love and care and that we are his precious vessels, his children and servants forever. We are indeed blessed. I am blessed, my Lord, and can approach this day as your child and servant without doubt or fear, knowing that whatever happens, my relationship to you is never in jeopardy. Now may I go forth to bring your love and joy into the difficult circumstances that confront me. Amen. So we are blessed. We are blessed by our God. But you know, there's an old saying back in Ireland, you can bring a horse to the well but you can't make a drink. And so many of God's children, no, in fact, all of God's children are invited at different stages of their journey to come home to God, not to religiosity, not to persecution, not to guilt or fear, but to come home to love. And though many are called, only a minority stay the course. So what's that saying to your heart about human nature? We are all weak, but for those who've surrendered their heart to God, their weakness is their strength. Because in their weakness, they realize their dependence upon God and God's strength and God's love to give them that spiritual power not to give in and wallow and be defeatist or negative, but to remain positive, even though all around them everything is crumbling. And we all go through the stages of defeat, bereavement, grief and loss. So let us trust, trust, that has put on the mindset of Christ, who in the midst of his own suffering in the garden of Gethsemane, who wept tears of blood, yet he went through with everything. He could have laid there crying, feeling sorry for himself, but he didn't, but he went through it alone because guess where his disciples and apostles were? round the corner fast asleep, snoring their heads off. Human nature. Okay, <clears throat> let's be still and let's come back to our heart and let us give thanks to God for the many gifts we receive. So I'd like you to just relax for a moment, be still, as we come into the presence of Mother Mary, our Heavenly Mother. And we ask her to join us. We ask her to come and pray with us. And <clears throat> the opening prayer of the Novena, we've already read it last night, but we're to read it again. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary did prepare a worthy dwelling place for thy Son, we beseech you 
that by the foreseen death of this your son, you did preserve her from all stain. So too you would permit us purified through her intercession to come unto you. Through the same Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God world without end. Amen. And the prayer for day two. O Mary, ever blessed Virgin, Mother of God, Queen of angels and of saints, we salute you with the most profound veneration and filial devotion as we contemplate your holy immaculate conception. We thank you for your maternal protection and for the many blessings that we have received through your wondrous mercy and most powerful intercession. In all our necessities, we have recourse to you with unbounded confidence O Mother of Mercy, we beseech you now to hear our prayer and to obtain for us of your Divine Son the favour that we so earnestly request in this novena. So now spend a moment in quiet reflection and bring to our Heavenly Mama, the Mother of God, your personal request. So we do that now. O Mary of the Immaculate Conception, Mother of Christ, you had influence with your Divine Son while upon this earth. You have the same influence now in heaven. Pray for us and obtain for us from him the granting of my petition, if it be the divine will. Amen. <clears throat> so let us now just be still and be aware of Mother Mary's presence around you. As you breathe in, you are breathing in her love and in your out breath. You are welcoming her into your home, your little monastery without walls. As you sit quietly in her presence, you hear a knock on your door and it is Gabriel again. And the Archangel Gabriel comes to you and he asks you to come with him. And you say, where am I going? He says, the mother of God is asking for you. Surprised, a little anxious, but inside of you there is an inner delight that the mother of God is asking for you. He leads you through your door, through a little woodland, a quiet, reflective woodland that has a little gate with private on it. So you go through the private gate with Gabriel and he leads you into a sacred woodland. There's a space Further up in the clearing, there's a bench there. And overhanging are the most beautiful pine trees. There's eucalyptus and you can smell it. As you inhale it, you can sense the beautiful aroma of the eucalyptus oils. It has a calming effect on you. And Gabriel invites you to just sit and relax, be still. And as you relax, <clears throat> you notice an elderly woman coming with a stick. She's struggling. 
In fact, her balance is so bad, she almost falls in front of you. You notice she's unkempt. Her stockings are laddered. Her shoes have holes in them. Her coat is threadburn. And she doesn't look a well old lady. And something asks you inside, who could this be? So you go over to this little old lady and you say to her, may I help you home? You seem to be struggling. And she says, I am. I'm really struggling and suffering. And you said, if you wish to sit here, I will go and fetch someone to come and we'll take you home. We've no transport, but I'm sure we could find a little wheelbarrow with some cushions in it and make your journey less stressful for you. And she smiles. And as you're about to leave, the old lady speaks with a young voice. Come, she said, it is me, your mama. It is Mary. You're startled. How can it be Mary? It was an old woman that I'd seen. And she said, I decided to come in disguise just to see was there one of God's children who would accept me because so many have rejected me? She says to you, I'm pleased I came in disguise to you, but you didn't turn away and let me fall. You offered to go home and get help. Not many will do that today. They they're forever asking for my help. They spend a fortune on lighting candles for petitions, but they walk past me. They ignore me because I am in every child of God. I am a mother's love and it was my son who died for them. So naturally, I have an investment in your growth, in your happiness and well-being. She asks you to take her hands. She holds your hands. And you feel so safe. So loved. And as you look up at her face, you see the most beautiful, face of a young woman and as she removes her headdress you see a crown of the most beautiful stones and as you help her to remove what appears to be sackcloth you see the most exquisite mantle of blue silk with ermine And suddenly as she stands, a legion of cherubs allow her to elevate. And they're holding out this most magnificent cloak that goes on and on and on. And the rays of brother sun are hitting the beautiful emeralds and gemstones in her crown. She lifts up her arms and she says to you, Peace, my beloved child. For I have come to you today as the Queen of Heaven. I am the Queen of Heaven. I am Queen of all the angels and the saints but I'm still your mother and I offer you a mother's love. You can come anytime to me 
for I do not sleep in the kingdom of God. I am always by my side, son, the son of God. I am there, sat next to him. And though many shout and scream and hurl abuse at my son for not answering their prayer, I am always there. I am the queen of love, the queen of joy and peace, and I am the patroness of the Teo community of St. Francis, and I only bring you love. So go from this secluded little woodland, go tell your friends that you have seen the mother of God, but be prepared to be laughed at to be mocked like little Bernadette of Subaru. Go in my name so that others will know that I am the Queen of Heaven, the Queen of Peace. And as you leave her, you see the little cherubs drawing in her beautiful mantle and under our feet, a beautiful white cloud covers our beautiful mama, and she's gone. And as you walk home, your heart is bursting with joy. For not only have you seen an old woman that you tried to help, but the old woman was the mother of God in disguise and who brought you a blessing. Let us pray her prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, pray with us, pray for us. And thank you for your blessing on all here and for assuring all of us that you are here and that you will never leave us as our queen and as our mother. And now back in your little monastery without walls, you feel the earth under your feet, your heart is a flutter. And as you open your eyes, you can smell the eucalyptic oils. And they bring back the memory of the old lady, barely able to walk until she revealed who she really was. It was a test to see would you walk away like so many of God's children, her clerics, her monks and nuns, many who say the devout Christians and Catholics, many of other faiths are more willing to adopt her. But you didn't walk away, you offered to help. And as you breathe in, you are breathing in her love. And her love is transforming your heart and reclaiming you as a child of love, as a child of God. We now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us at this hour our daily bread, forgive us. O oh Lord, forgive us the times we've let you down, the times we've walked away in stubbornness because we knew better. Lead us not astray and protect us from defeatism and negativism. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. So be it. And our closing prayer is from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. <clears throat> Here we go. O Christ, you are a bright flame before us. You are a guiding star above us. You are the light and love I see in others' eyes. Keep us, O Christ, in a love that is tender. Keep us, O Christ, in a love that is true. Keep us, O Christ, in a love that is strong tonight, tomorrow, and always. Amen. And as I blow out this light on this second day of our Novena, we thank our Blessed Mother for bestowing upon each one of us now a precious blessing and that she cares for each one of us and especially for our brothers and sisters in the Teo community who show her so much love and respect as our main patroness and that she blesses especially those making their commitments on her feast to serve her beloved son. And that she will facilitate now the Frank Clara Abbey and touch many hearts to give generously to the setting up of the new foundation in her name, the province of the Immaculate Conception. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. <clears throat> Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace from the queen of peace, from the son of peace, be your peace at this hour. Thank you so much for joining me and commiserations to our brothers and sisters on Facebook. It must be the weather, it must be the satellite, but if it was meant to be, it would have been. So we just say, Lord, we bless every disappointment because in the monastery years ago, the superiors used to say to us, man's disappointment today is God's appointment for your tomorrow. Peace. Good night and God bless.